22-year-old Alice Carter has had an unusual childhood. She grew up with six different dads in her life, but she's never felt that she's had a proper dad. He wasn't there when I needed him. I've got that thing inside me that's just a niggling thing in my tummy every time someone, like, I watched a film and there's like a dad and a daughter and I think, where's my dad? Like, why haven't I got that? If he let me down. Some of Alice's six dads didn't stick around for very long. This is Noel, the most recent dad. Before that, Tristram, and he adopted us. Before that, Pete, he left. Ronnie. This is Davey. We're still very close. The last one would be my biological dad, Stuart, but I don't have a picture of him. It's just me and my mum, and he's not there. I'm so Alice wants to find out which of her six fathers she can truly call dad. And figuring it out has just become even more important. I'm engaged. <laughs> Ricky asked me to marry him last night, and I said yes, obviously. There's the ring. <laughs> now Alice must decide which of her six dads will walk her down the aisle. Do I have to just have one? Because I, <laughs> I could imagine that having Tristram on one arm and Noel on the other. <laughs> like, skipping down. <laughs> First, she must find her biological dad, Stuart, who she hasn't seen since she was a baby. Like, my dream thing would be for him to just be really happy that I'd found him. And then he'd be like, oh. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just in fairyland. <laughs> but if she does get to meet him, will he be all that she's hoping for? My mum's just dropped a massive bombshell on me. I'm getting, bit, I'm getting quite scared, actually. <laughs> it doesn't take away anything from what I've got now. <laughs> Reuniting with her former dads will be emotional. <laughs> I nearly cried. I could feel the tears on in my eyes when he was, like, saying about how he can imagine us all being a family together. Alice will walk down the aisle knowing more about the men who played father to her. But will that knowledge make her a more confident and happy woman? He wasn't there when I needed him. No, he was never around. Alice left home when she was 17 and moved in with her 34-year-old boyfriend, Ricky. They'd been together for almost five years before Ricky proposed. The original plan was to... Um sort of whisk her off to Paris, because she said when we first went to Paris, oh, I'd love it if you proposed to me on the top of the Eiffel Tower. So that was my plan. <laughs> was that that obvious? Yeah. <laughs> Did it cross your mind to ask any of her dads for permission? No. <laughs> Who's paying for it anyway? Your mum's supposed to pay, ain't she? No. Yeah, the bride's family. I oh. think my dad's supposed to pay for it, but as soon as I don't technically have one, I don't think that's going to happen. You better happen. find him, tell him he's got to pay for a wedding. <laughs> Here's another question for you. Who's going to give you away? And apparently, your mum can give you away. It doesn't right. have to be your dad. So I might just do that as soon as I, my mum's actually been there forever and no one else has. Before Alice turns her thoughts to the wedding day, she's got her engagement party to plan. Today, she's checking out the venue. Hiya, you all right? I'm Alice. Andy. Hiya. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I love being engaged. I've always wanted to be engaged to Ricky, like, since I first met him. That's so <laughs> cheesy, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, so I think we'll probably have, like, the champagne and stuff there and the food, maybe, just to, like, put it in one area. And then hopefully this area will be, like, dancing because it's quite... There's quite a big area. And then we're going to have, like, the screen up, up on here um, and then hook the microphones up somewhere <laughs> and hopefully have people, like, standing here singing as well, so that'll be quite funny. <laughs> My stepdad, Noel, is going to do a song on the guitar about me and Ricky, I think. <laughs> so hopefully that won't be too cringeworthy. <laughs> I'm not a kid. I don't need... A dad, dad, that's going to, you know, tie my laces and make me breakfast. That's not what I'm looking for. It's just nice knowing that there's somebody else there that, like, really loves me. It's just a nice feeling. The only one of her six dads that Alice has no memory of is her biological dad, Stuart. It's 20 years since her mum was last in touch with him, 
and Alice wants to find out what he was like back then. When I was younger, I really didn't care that I didn't have a dad as such. Um, and I quite liked it, in fact, because I thought I was like special because it was just me and my mum. And um, people would be like, oh, my dad's done this, my dad won't let me go out, and blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, I don't have a dad, I can do what I want, kind of thing. But like now, I wish she'd have kept in contact with him somehow. I wish he'd have kept in contact. And I don't really know why that didn't happen. Hiya. Alice is the oldest of four, but the only child her mum, Anne-Marie, had with Stuart. He wanted to call you Solstice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God, thank, thank God you left him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be a completely different person. Well, you really call it, call it Alice, right, you know, but... Um, <laughs> he, was, he, was a, he was a bit of a hippie, you know. He had long dreadlocks, you know, when I met him. Did I tell you, the long, no. of long dreads, yeah? Like Eric the Viking or something, you know? <laughs> What did I say? He looked Leonardo right. DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, really? <laughs> and then one time when I was at work, he, he sort of sat outside my work for hours on end just playing his penny whistle, you know, and I was just mortified, you know? <laughs> You might like that story. Why yeah. was he doing that? Were you pregnant with me yeah. at the time? And did yeah. he know? Yeah. Stuart was, to me, when you were born, was just not, he was just completely insignificant, really. If I'd have sort of chosen him to be the one, I hadn't done that, really, you know? Because I used to think, you know, that's it, you meet the person and you get married. And that's how I, that's how I used to think, darling, you know? <laughs> You know, so I think I was quite upset that I'd got pregnant with him, really. I mean, I really wanted you, but, you know, so I think that's what caused the problems at that time. You'd want your dad to be the one, wouldn't you? I guess she's built him up in her head ever since she was a child. I've tried to be as, as, re as realistic as possible, apart from telling her that, um, that Stuart looked like um, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> there was some truth in that. Like she says, she romanticises it a bit, but that's always, always the way she's told me about him. Like always been in a positive light and stuff. So it's nice to hear it, but I'm just worried that maybe he won't be like that anymore, or <laughs> like I'll be disappointed because she's kind of, without meaning to, like built it up a bit. I think. I don't think she's looking for love or anything, you know, she's got plenty of that already, you know. Um, I, 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 just, I, I think it's curiosity and also um, I, I think wanting to see where she comes from, that other side of her. She's 50% his genetics, you know, so she wants to see that. Perhaps just a part of her wants him to look at her and think, wow, I've missed that. Alice was just two and a half when she last had any contact with her biological father, Stuart, and now she has no idea where he is. Dear Stuart, I hope this letter reaches you and that you are not too surprised to receive it. The main reason I want to meet you is simply to see what you look like, as I have never even seen a photograph. I want you to know that I'm not angry at you for not being in my life. I'm sure you have your own reasons for this. If you don't feel ready to meet me, then maybe you could send me a photo and I will send you one in return. I just really hope that you want to meet me as much as I do you. When Alice was growing up, most of her six father figures weren't around for very long, but she hopes her marriage to Ricky will be forever. I'm really happy with Ricky and like we talk about having kids in the future together and I just really want to be completely fully like an adult and completely like I've dealt with everything in my childhood. When Alice was still a baby, her mother met and fell in love with the second of Alice's dads, Davy. Davy decided not to be on camera because he said our relationship's personal and it's between us. I don't really see Davy that often anymore because he lives on a little island in Scotland. Um, he's got three kids of his own. I think the person that I'm closer to now is probably Catherine, his mum, because I see her as being like a grandma to me. Just packing my stuff up to go and see Catherine tomorrow. 
that was always, can I go to Molly and Catherine's? And she'd like take me out to the fair. I remember going to the fair all the time. I loved the fair. Well, she used to spoil me rotten. <laughs> And just, I just remember waking up and like the sun always seemed to be shining through the curtains and I was always like, ah, nice to be waking up at Catherine's. Alice has happy memories of Davy and still sees him occasionally. But she wants to know more about the time Davy and her mum were together. She's also hoping Catherine may have some thoughts about how she can find Stuart, her biological father. She might have known Stuart because him and Davy were friends at one point. So she might be able to tell me like something about what it was like or what it looked like at least. Customers are requested to stand behind the yellow line. She's said to me already that whatever help I need finding him, that she'll be there to help me and she'll do what she can. Fish and chips already, I want it. <laughs> Fish and chips are good up here. Hello! Hiya, come on in. Hi, yeah. Hiya. Oh, nice to see you again. Come on. <laughs> Do you want to know something? Hmm? Ah, congratulations! <laughs> oh, well done! <laughs> Oh, that's gorgeous, that. <laughs> really happy. Oh, so am I, please. Yeah, that's <laughs> superb, that. Do you want to have a look at my file? Catherine has kept some old photos and cards from Alice's childhood. Right. This is you at around about 18, 15, 18 months. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Gaunt the Glastonbury Festival? I don't remember it at all, but I, I know that I went and I think my mum snuck in, didn't she? She said... Mum and Dad, we're in Cornwall now. Who wrote this then? David. David. Um, I'm on the site crew setting up in the festival to happen in three weeks. Alice is doing great. Anne Marie is quite happy. <laughs> She's got the bus well cleaned out. <laughs> Having a good time. Love Davy and Anne Marie. Aww. When Davy and your mum split up, that you were three, it was a very amicable split. Mm. David wanted to go down the road and live in a bus, um, living in a hippie convoy mm. with a, a, a baby was a concept that Anne-Marie obviously couldn't deal with. And to be honest with you, I don't blame her. Um, but David came to me and said, um, Anne-Marie's quite happy for you to maintain your relationship with Alice, and he says, Alice would like it, and I would like it. Because, as he said, he'd been your daddy for a while. It meant that um, he would still have contact with you and see you through me. That's Dave, isn't he? <laughs> Do you think he wanted, it, wanted to stay in touch with me as oh, well? Oh, yes. Yeah, because he'd been your dad. He's an excellent parent, and he's... Well, sometimes I wish he was my dad, and I think, like, if him and Mum would stay together, then he would be, so... Mm -hmm. You're the sum of your parents, and if you don't know the other parent, do you know what I mean? You don't know where facets of you come from. She's got nothing that belongs to her. They're all, all them dads she's had have been ships that have passed in the night. Where's her ship? Where's her dad? Alice has been hoping that Catherine might be able to tell her more about her biological dad, Stuart. Did you ever meet him? I might have done, but I wouldn't have known. Yeah. I've heard nothing bad about him. My mum's always said nice things about him. She told me once that he looked like Leonardo DiCaprio a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, that would fit, wouldn't it? Although Catherine doesn't remember Stuart, she's offered to help Alice try to find him. She suggested Alice tries to find a marriage certificate for Stuart. If she tracks one down, she'll then have his address. We can put Stuart in, or we can just put an S in and see if... So that's a possibility. This one interests me. 1998. 1998. Yeah. That could be Stuart's oh, wife yeah. and that could be Stuart's son and this could be Stuart's father. Or this might be a child named after his father. How do you get the certificate? What you do is you click onto here, right? And what you do is you print that application form out. 
And you just send seven pound. All right. Now again, you don't know whether that's them, but the time's right. There's a lot in the favour of that being them. So again, that's a positive. I mean, Catherine's like my grandma, and right. other people go to their grandmas and they've got albums of them, and they tell them about what it was like when they were a kid. And that's, I think, that's important to be able to place yourself within a family like that, and within just and just know who you are kind of thing and even though me and Catherine aren't blood related she's been able to do that for me which I'm just really really grateful for you don't mind sleeping with dinosaurs do you? <laughs> no <laughs> it's quite all right there you go right so we're going to when Alice was born, her mum was living in Sunderland, not far from Catherine and Davy. Now Alice wants to get a sense of her mum's life back then. I do feel like there's something missing in terms of what I know about myself. I want to know everything about myself and where I've come from, and I don't know that. Catherine's made me this map of um, where everyone used to live. My mum used to live here, and that's where my granddad still lives. Yeah, that's my cousin's road. My mum used to live on this road. I think my mum lived here when she was a kid, and I think she must have lived here until, probably until she had me and went um, travelling with Davy. I had my first Christmas here, so we obviously when my mum was with Davy, we came back here for like a family Christmas. That side's where my mum lived, and then over that side's where Davy lived as a kid, so it's so close. And like Catherine said, they couldn't have avoided each other, really. Alice is still a long way from deciding which of the six father figures she can truly call dad. But she's beginning to understand more about her past. I think because my mum was so young when she had me, she was only 21. And I think a lot of people make mistakes in relationships and get with the wrong people, or they get with people who they think are the right person and then it doesn't work out. But she felt very strongly that she wanted all of us. She just didn't want the man that had made us. Alice's mum only married one of the father figures in Alice's life. But while Alice is turning her thoughts to a white wedding, her mum had a less traditional affair. I've all green. Emerald green. Oh, no, I'd never wear green. Yeah, you were in green too. Yeah, but it wasn't my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Married's different to wedding, though, isn't it? Really, you know. Um... You're only going to do it once, hopefully. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, since I've met Ricky, I've like had an idea of what I wanted in my head. Because <laughs> I knew I wanted to get married straight away. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I knew that I loved him in, like, mm. one second. Mm. <laughs> I definitely want it white, no straps. And then I'm not sure whether I want it to puff out or just go straight down yet. I don't know, because I've not tried any. Depends what suits my figure. Because mm. I've got quite big hips, so if I have something that goes straight down, I might look a bit too hip-heavy. Hip-heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I just made that <laughs> It's been a week since Alice applied for what she hopes could be Stuart's marriage certificate. If it is, she could have an address for her biological dad. This is the um, marriage certificate that I sent off for from Sunderland City Council. <laughs> but I don't know whether it'll be him or not, I don't know. <laughs> Father's name. Mm. But it says the dad is Frederick. It says they got married in 1998. He was 27 and she was 18. That means it's definitely not it. Because he definitely wasn't 27 in 1998. No, because that would have made him 17 when he had me. <laughs> he definitely wasn't, so. Yeah, it's not it. It's not him.
maybe this is a lot to take on, like, in my third year of university when <laughs> I've got everything else to worry about, like, the rest of my life. <laughs> so, um, and I've just, I've got a job interview on Monday as well. So, I think on top of that, it's like, ah! But I think if I wasn't finding him, I'd still be thinking about it. And when I start something, like, that's it. I'm just like, right, I've got to do it. <laughs> I'd really love him to come to my wedding because, for me, the wedding symbolises having everybody that's meant something to me through my life there, all in one place, celebrating with me and Ricky. So if he could be part of that, that would like, be really good. By the time Alice's wedding comes around, she'll need to have decided which of her dads will walk her down the aisle. But some decisions are a little easier to make like what she's going to wear to her engagement party tonight. This is a dress. And these are the shoes. <laughs> and I'm hoping to get my nails done, like, one of these colours, so it goes with it. I'm going to ask him to do my hair, like, really big and, like, bouffante, like, 60s style, <laughs> and then put that in it, like... <laughs> oh, my God, steps in high heels. Not the wedding, but it feels just as important. Like for me, in a way, it's more important because it's the first time everyone's met each other. You mean mummy's the buddy crown me? You mean mummy? Andre went, your mum's hot. <laughs> It's only a couple of months in from when I met Alice that I felt that this was the right thing to do anyway. It's just that now we've made it more official and we've made it more public. But I've always felt that this is, you know, I've always felt very close to them and part of their family for, you know, for a very long time. Alice's stepdad, Noel, has written a song especially for the party. <laughs> Take it away, Noel. <laughs> Rick got down on one knee, made our Alice into a bride to be. Hey! Now, everyone knows Ricky, nobody's fool. But this time we think he may have blown his cool. With loads of mates and a Facebook queue, our Alice tells Ricky just what to do. Ricky lets our Alice think that she's the boss, but we all know that Ricky doesn't give a toss. <laughs> Press it again, hold it. Every time I try to imagine Alice as a married woman, <laughs> transposed on that were images of her as a newborn baby or a four-year-old, a 14-year-old, but never a married woman. And um, I remembered when she was a baby and uh, I read this book. Um, I don't know if anybody knows it, The Prophet. And one of the things I read sort of rang in my ears this morning. Their souls dwell in the house of the tomorrow and you cannot visit there, not even in your dreams. And I was so indignant, you know, when she was a baby, like, yes, you know, she's part of me, she's part of my soul, you know? <laughs> but, on, uh, but recently I've seen Alice make those massive, confident strides into the house of tomorrow. And now I understand it. And so I just want to say, if it's not too old-fashioned, I want to give you both my blessing for your tomorrows. <laughs> A few days later, Alice's thoughts return to the men who have played a part in her life. When Alice was eight, her mum met Tristram, the fifth father figure in Alice's life, and they married. By then, Alice had a younger brother and sister, and Tristram adopted them all. It did feel like this is it kind of thing, like, this, like Tristram's going to be my dad forever. 
I haven't really seen him for the past about six, seven years. I haven't really seen him properly. And, like, obviously, when I moved here, like, I just stopped seeing him altogether cos I didn't really feel like I needed him, like, as a dad kind of thing, as much as I did when I was a kid. So I think I just, like, grew apart from him, really. Now I'm just... I've just started to think, like, oh, it's a shame that he's not in my life a bit more. I think I just want, like, a grown-up father-daughter relationship, like other people have. Alice hasn't been to visit Tristram for years, though he is still legally her dad. It all looks really different. I can't exactly remember which house it is. We got the <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know if it's this one. <laughs> it, yeah, all looks really it all looks really different. I was thinking, is it that one or that one? I thought, I'll just try this one first because I'm closer. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> this is when you got dressed up for the wedding. Oh, is it? It's a bit battered, but that's because I had it in my wallet for <laughs> a couple of years. This is when we were in Pensha. Yeah, I remember that car. <laughs> oh, God, I remember that top. I remember thinking I was, like, the coolest kid in school with that top. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, street party at Grandma's. That's <laughs> right. I'm going to have a look at wedding dresses, actually, on Monday. And I was just remembering that our mum wore green and I was like, I don't know how she wore green. I want white all the way, like, the proper big <laughs> traditional. Well, we did it on an absolute shoestring. Yeah, it was, it was a nice wedding there. I remember oh, it was that a day. Wedding. What do you remember about Sunderland living there? I used to take you to school mm. and then take Rosie to hers, which was miles away. <laughs> and then by the time we got back, me and Hamish, that is, We'd have to leave again after about ten minutes to go and pick Rosie up again. God. And we had that. <coughs> so it was... So you pretty much spent like all day every day with Hamish then? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Remember his first word was dad. Was that? I didn't know that. I was that. absolutely made up. And that's the bridge at, in the countryside where we used to go. It was somewhere because of the stream. Mm. You could spend all day there. You could actually swim in it as well, I remember, at some point. <laughs> yeah, this is the bridge where, like, we used to come when I was little, but it seems a lot smaller, like, now, when I look at it, it's like... <laughs> it's just a little footbridge, but I remember it being, like, really significant. <laughs> it's the kind of thing that I want to, like, make sure that I do with my kids. Yeah, we had some smashing times here. But you used to go charging up there. Yeah, we used to climb on the rocks up there in the heather, didn't we? I remember that. We'd put blanket probably there or here. You lot would be in there. <laughs> yeah, because you'd go up there and I'd say, you can't go around the bend because <laughs> I can't see you when you're not around. <laughs> <laughs> I've not grown up that much. I might be getting married, but I'm still a kid at heart. Like, one thing I'm really grateful is that even though you and my mum split up, like, I know you adopted me legally, but I think even though you did that, you could have still just not kind of kept that contact. But we did definitely. You were still definitely my dad, and I still think of you as that now. And, like, we used to come around to yours at weekends and stuff, like you're saying. Uh, yeah. I mean, we were seeing lots of each other for years after me and your mum split up. Um, and it wasn't just because I felt there was a duty, although I knew there was, with the three of you not having fathers in the house and feeling a certain amount of abandonment, although you weren't abandoned, um, there's that feeling as you're growing up, you know, why, why on earth does my father or my dad not want anything to do with me? And that's, that's a horrible thing. So yes, there was a sense of duty, but there was also a lot of love. You know, I love you kids, love you a lot, and I miss not having my family. Um, it was heartbreaking for me when uh, it splits up with your mum because I, I moved out and I lost my family. But I didn't. It's just I didn't come home after work to the family in the house. It was like, where are the kids? It was, it was just, it was wrong. Um, 
And so it, it took me a long, long time to, to deal with that. It's, and knowing that they're growing up and when I come over to your house and you're not in because you're off with your boyfriends or something, it's like, oh, right, another weekend I'm not going to see you. And you can't put pressure on teenagers because teenagers will do what they want to do. Yeah, it's like with me and you, like, it wasn't I didn't want to see you. I think my life just moved so fast. Like, like you said, I was always out the house and mm. doing this, that and the other, and then I moved in with Ricky and... <laughs> My bum's getting a bit cold. It's a bit nippy, <laughs> isn't it? You get piles from sitting on a cold thing, you do, don't you? <laughs> you do, and then you're scratching oh, a lot. <laughs> oh, take my arm off. Yeah, it's really nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's smashing to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. It's just like really, really nice because I kind of realised that I'd, I, it just reminded me, like seeing all the old photos and going to the old places and hearing his memories of things that I didn't remember just kind of really brought it all back for me, how close we were. But I got a sense that he'd felt quite upset that he'd lost us and he'd lost that family kind of unit thing. Um, and also that now, like, I think he's really happy that I've, like, got back in touch with him. And I think, like, he still wants to be my dad now. Um, it sounds strange, but I think he'd make a really good dad now. <laughs> Even though I might think that I'm past the age of needing it, it's nice to have that still. Though Tristram is very much on her mind, Alice still wants to find her biological father, Stuart. She's been given a phone number for someone who could be in touch with him, and she's finally plucked up the courage to make the call. I do feel nervous, but it's something that I know I need to do at some point, and I just want to do it, like, now. Hiya, um, my name's Alice. All right, well, I'm looking for Stuart, um, cos I don't know if you know, but he's my dad and I've never met him, so... <laughs> um, I'm getting married this year and I kind of want to meet him before that. <laughs> That's the thing, I, I don't want anything from him, you know, I'm not after anything, I just want to see what, see him. <laughs> Are you still in touch with him? Is he still in Sunderland then, or has he moved away? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. When I was on the phone to him, my heart was like going a million miles an hour. But he was so nice. He was like, he was like, it's only right you should be able to find your dad. He was like, I'll help you as much as I can and all this. I don't think he would be in Sunderland. I, I had a strong feeling that he'd moved away. So that's quite good that it's confirmed it. Just wait for him to call back. That's all I can do, really. <laughs> Alice now knows her biological dad moved away from Sunderland, but as Stuart's old friend hasn't been in touch with him for years, he hasn't been able to tell her where he is now. Although this is my journey that I'm going on to find my dad and think about all the people in my life that have meant something to me, it's actually, I think it's actually really emotionally straining on my mum and quite difficult for her. She's having to think back over her whole life as well as mine and the different relationships she's had. And I think having to go back through all that stuff so long after it's happened, I think she's finding that quite hard. So that's a bit upsetting for me. Um, I don't want I don't want to upset her and I don't want her to do anything that she doesn't want to do and I think the only reason she's doing that is because she knows it's important for me and that she's doing it for me basically today Alice and her mum are concentrating on happier matters shopping for a wedding dress Let's have a little look. although Alice still hasn't decided who will walk her down the aisle she has decided that she'd like a big white wedding that's quite nice I love this. Mm. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> I like the shape, the way it goes 
start the back. But I don't like my belly in it. <laughs> it's got to be something really special. I think the wedding day, you know. Well, however you make that, you know, you don't have to follow the conventional route. But you can just be a bit creative with your particular fairy tale. I mean, I don't know about this generation, but we were brought up on fairy tales, you know. Knight in shining armor's got me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> that colour's nice. I love. I think that colour suits you better. When Ricky asked me to marry him, it was like, I don't know, it just makes you think about things more. And I really want like everybody in my life that's meant something to me to be there. Um, so it's not just about Stuart, it's about everybody. Like when I saw Tristram on Saturday, it was clear like the love that he had for me. I knew that anyway, but it was just really nice to spend that bit of time with him and like hear it from him. Um, and it really made me like value our relationship more and like want to see it. Um, <laughs> so, so I guess I hope that I'm, I feel something like that with Stuart. I think it'd be really horrible if I met him and I didn't feel anything, if it was just like, oh, you're a stranger kind of thing. And obviously he is a stranger, I don't know him, but I just hope that there's like something that there should be, because I'm his daughter. <laughs> Definitely need a drink now. Yeah. <laughs> While Alice is looking to the past to find her real dad, there is another father figure who is still in her life. Her mum's partner, Noel, has been around since Alice was 15. When I first met Alice, there wasn't a real stable feeling at home and um, she didn't open her arms up straight away and say welcome Noel because I think uh, she expected me just to be like a ship that passed in the night and gone. When Noel came into the household and the family I just thought oh like here's another bloke that's gonna stick around for a bit and then just like off and disappoint everyone. Because, I don't know, because I felt like I'd been let down in the past by, like, different men, that I just thought he'd be the same, and I just presumed. There he is. Have you had your hair cut again? Yeah, she's... Fringe looks, looks good. She's doing a Manchester ball. <laughs> yeah, <right>? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been, like, it must have been quite difficult for you, sort of, coming into... Like, not just meeting my mum, but, like, meeting me and Rosie and Hamish and, like, coming into that what kind of family. What did you tell me about any of you lot? Really? <laughs> she, was, she, she, she was, like, party girl, wasn't she? Yeah. When I saw toys and, you know, games and all that, and I, I looked at Potted Plant on its last legs. <laughs> I thought... <laughs> I, I nearly left that day, like... Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember you sitting on the sofa at Blake Street and I was like, who's this? <laughs> yeah. Right now, you know, it's not been easy, has it? No. I mean, when I first met you, you didn't like it, did you? Nobody likes it, didn't they? Nobody likes new things. Like, it wasn't even really anything you did, it was just that, you know, like, with the past and other people that our mum had dated or whatever, and some of our dads had been there, been around, and then just gone and I'd, like, felt quite let down, so I just... I think I just presumed that you were going to be the same. Yeah. I don't know if I've really said this to you, but I'm, I'm like really glad that you and my mum are together. This time, it does feel like the most time that I've felt part of a family. Like even though I don't live at home, yeah. it's always right nice when I come back and like yeah, everyone, we all eat out. together and like you, yeah. it's like that proper family environment. Well, it's Bobby, isn't it? She makes that happen, yeah. like. So I mean, I can see a like, nice future, you know, for all family, like you know, us like having a laugh together and that, and uh, maybe even going on holiday together one time when you're all. A bit, a bit more growing up and that. I can imagine that'd be a very nice time. Yeah, I, mean, I nearly cried. I could feel the tears on in my eyes when he was like saying about how he can imagine us all being a family together and like we are, but like you can imagine the future when we can all go on holiday together and like Rosie and Hamish are a bit more grown up and they want to be involved in that and stuff. This is really nice to hear that. I'd like her to see me as the father figure, you know, like, 
uh, her sister is my babby. And, um, you know, like, it's a nice family feeling if she sees me like that. And uh, I see her like a daughter anyway. I, I, like, look out for her like a daughter. Maybe when she goes down the aisle, I can give her away, maybe, you know what I mean? That would be nice. I don't think Noel would ever expect for me to ask him to walk, it, walk me down the aisle. Whereas with Tristram, I think he might be, he would be quite offended if I didn't ask him. It's not like a competition or anything, but it's definitely between Noel and Tristram. <laughs> It's been over a month since Alice first started searching for Stuart. His old friend has got back in touch with her, and this time he's got some news. It's really late at night, and I'm knackered, and I got a text saying, um, have found him on Facebook. So I'm presuming he means he's found Stuart. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Hang on a sec. I don't want to lose this page. <laughs> if this is Stuart, Alice will finally be able to contact him. So is that him then, but there's just no picture? This is weird. This is definitely Stuart because that's his sister. And then this John guy and this other guy who's related to him are like his really good friends. So it's definitely him, even though there's no picture. I'm just, I'm just like, I'm already like thinking that he's just going to ignore me or just be like, I think I'm just preparing myself for the worst, but that's the like feeling that I get. At last. Alice has a way of getting in touch with Stuart. Before she decides what to do next, she wants to talk things through with her mum. Do you think I should then? Like, well, what, well, it's not up to you, obviously. It's my, it's my choice. The momentum's gone this far, you know. What you're not. I mean, even if you don't do it now, you'll do it two years down the line, won't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. That's you just need to see what he looks like, don't you? You need to see that resemblance, you know, if, you, if the, where you where you come from. You don't come from there in, emotionally or any other way, but just really genetically, you know, who who else do I look like apart from my mum? Mm. You know, so... Yeah. And even if he doesn't contact you, you still have shown him, look, this is what you've yeah, missed, right. frankly. Are you sure you're all right, then you're going to...? Yeah. I honestly am. Whatever happens when I meet him, it's going to be awkward because we've not seen each other for 20, 20 odd years. Come on, Blondie. I just hope that we get somewhere where we can actually have a good relationship rather than just being like, no, I'm not willing to do it and I don't want to see you because that'd be the worst thing. There is another thing that has been troubling Alice. She's recently discovered that Stuart might not even believe he's her dad. Well, my mum's told me that when she, when they were splitting up or whatever, it was obviously quite a difficult time. And I think at some point she told him that I wasn't his. Um, and obviously that was a really stupid thing to do, but to be fair, she was only 21 and she was dealing with this completely on her own. So I think obviously she like, deeply regrets doing that. Um, and she's always, always told me that I'm a biological father's steward and, you know, there's never been any doubt about it. She knows like, 100% that it's him. I think maybe, I don't know why she said that to her, maybe she just got angry one day. So that could have caused a bit of doubt in him, but... But I don't think it would have, because he came back, my mum said he came back two years later and wanted to see me again and, and saw me for a little while. After thinking things over, Alice has decided to send Stuart a message via his Facebook page. Dear Stuart, I hope this reaches you and that you are not too surprised to receive it. I'm aware that when you and my mum broke up, she may have told you I wasn't your child. However, she has always named you as my biological father, and I believe she deeply regrets saying such a silly and hurtful thing. I'm 22 years old now and happily engaged to my partner of almost five years, Ricky. 
If you don't feel ready to meet me, then maybe you could send me a photo, just so I can see what you look like, and I will send you one in return. I hope to hear from you soon, Alice. I think I had quite a negative view of men before I met Ricky. I just thought that all men would just like get women pregnant and then just leave them, and that was quite bad. <laughs> you never know, he could still do that, but <laughs> I don't think he will. Alice wants a romantic setting for her marriage to Ricky, and today they're looking round a luxury wedding venue in Derbyshire. Hi. Hello. Alice. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice Hi, to meet you. Ricky. Hi, I'm Monday. Hi. Hello. Hiya. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're wanting to have? I think we just wanted like a, a kind of like a hot buffet um, reception. Okay, kind of that's thing. fine. Just go or whatever you do. All right then. <laughs> Then your top table would actually be set up across this back wall here. Mm -hmm. And then the cake goes later on the day, and your DJ in the evening. And then you would actually get married in the pavilion with the registrar. Uh -oh. Look at a little face. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so romantic, and yeah. it does. It, it looks it in real life as well. Yeah. You can actually land a helicopter here as well if you want to come by a helicopter. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you might like to see a little yeah. bit of a James Bond. Do you know why you're coming in? Basically, what I'll do is come out of the hotel, like me and my mum and like my bridal party, my bridesmaids and maid of honour, come out of the bush like ta da! And then there's like a red carpet down here and gold chairs either side. And I walk down the red carpet and then Ricky's standing over here waiting for me. <laughs> Let's hope we get a day like this. I know, it's gorgeous. Still no news from Stuart. Um, this is like the second weekend now since I sent it. So it's a bit annoying because I would have thought that if he was going to check his Facebook, then it probably would have been on a weekend. Maybe he just needs time to like let it all sink in. But I don't see how he'd need that much time because he has known about me for the last 22 years, so... <laughs> but maybe, I don't know, maybe he hasn't seen it, um, seen it yet, or I don't know what. So I'm going to give him maybe another week or two and see what happens, and then think of a plan B. While Alice has been busy looking for her biological father, Stuart, she's discovered there are people who really care for her closer to home. She wants to spend more time with Tristram, the dad who adopted her when she was eight. I've just been had a quick look at it and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm imagining myself standing right on the top there and I'm like... <laughs> if you want to go up halfway and come down and then try again... <laughs> That's it, you got it. <laughs> Like, you don't look like you're doing much, but actually it's a lot kind of... It's a lot more um, effort than you actually think. Like, I'm kind of out of breath and all I've done is that. <laughs> I think it's great. I've seen more of her in the past two weeks than I've seen in the past seven years, so it's great to have her come out. Look, I can hang there forever. <laughs> you're like and a monkey. Like that, I'm going to get knackered straight away. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Fine effort. It's really nice to see her now that she's past those teenage years um, and is a, a young adult making her way, and yet she's still Alice. Yeah, so um, I found him, on, I found Stuart on Facebook. But there was no picture, unfortunately, but um, I think that's because his profile's set to private, so I've added him as a friend and I've sent him a message. <laughs> and I just said, you know, I'm not looking for a father figure, I've got someone who I call dad, and I don't need that from you, but I just want to see where I've come from and just to explain it so it doesn't feel too much like pressure. Oh, fantastic. So it's just a waiting game now. <laughs> That's quite a breakthrough. Yeah, because that's quite a big step that I've actually found him and he exists, so... That is a big step. 
Well done. But yeah, I'm pleased. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see you. All right, you can. I do down. still want to find Stuart, and I do want to know where I've come from biologically. But actually, I'm starting to realise more and more that who I am and where I've come from is actually from the people that have brought me up, like from things, obviously from my mum the most, but from Tristram as well, there's things that I do and say that I'm sort of starting to realise that I've got from him. It feels like we've never not had a time when we've seen each other kind of thing. It feels like he's been there the whole time now. <laughs> Almost two weeks after sending a message to her biological dad, Stuart, Alice has had a reply. I got an email today and um, I didn't think it was anything at first because it said it, was, it had come from Joe Bloggs and it said, hi, Alice, and I thought, oh, that, that must be a spam email, but I thought I'll just open it and just say. Um, so I opened it up and it was actually from Stuart. So I'm not sure why he sent, sent it me from Joe Bloggs. And it says, hi, Alice. I received your message over a week ago and have thought about it a lot. However, I'm still not sure what to do. I have a family and I need to consider them first. Um, when I was with Marie, I had good reason to doubt you were mine and I never got involved in your life, so it seems a bit odd to be called bio dad. Makes it sound like some kind of, <laughs> like, cartoon character. I will contact you when I have thought it through. Please leave it at that. Bye, Stuart. So, that's a bit shit, really. Having been told many years ago that he wasn't Alice's biological dad, Stuart's response is completely understandable. But Alice is upset. It feels a bit like I'm like an inconvenience for him, and he's like, oh. Now I have to deal with this. <laughs> really? What? Yeah, just... Well, what kind of response is that? But I'm upset for you, darling, to be honest. I'm a bit annoyed that he's put, when I was with Marie, I had good reason to doubt you were mine. Well, it's self-justification, isn't it? You know? Sometimes I wish you'd just never even known about him and I'd told, you know, and I, and, you know, but I had to be honest with you and tell you about him. I would prefer the other genetic half of you to be from somewhere else, but, you know? But you're mostly like me anyway, darling. I feel like I've upset you now. <laughs> It doesn't take away anything from what I've got now. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't take away anything from us and like what we've been through together and all that. I mean, it's not your fault. I know, but I, don't, I want you to find something better than that, you know? I don't think I want to meet him now, but I still need to know something about him. I still do want to see a picture of him. Everybody else knows what their parents look like, so why can't I? It's two weeks after she first heard from Stuart, and Alice has just received another message, and this time with a photo. <gasps> oh, God. Oh. He sent me a picture of him, like, in a swimming pool. It looks like a, fam like a family holiday picture, and it it's called Family Snaps and there's someone else in it, and they've got this, their hand on him, so it's obviously like his son, but he's cut, he's cut out, so you can't see him. He said in the first email I'd been thinking about this. It's been on my mind all week or something he put. So that picture could be, here's a picture in the meantime and I'm still thinking about it, or it could be, here's a picture and let's leave it at that. 
Before, when I thought about who's my biological dad like, where have I come from, and there was just this like blank space. But now, if somebody says something about a dad, I've got something to think about, it's there. And it's quite a nice picture of him smiling. I'm just looking to the future now. I feel like I can move on. I don't need him. It's absolutely fine without him. <laughs> In looking for Stuart, I've actually realised that I've got that father figure. I've got everything that I need, and, I, and Stuart's not a part of it. After seeing a picture of her biological dad and finally making contact with him, Alice has made a big decision. I've decided that I definitely want Noel and Tristram to walk me down the aisle and to share that role because they've both been there for me in different ways and both are there for me in different ways. The wedding's supposed to be... It's supposed to be everybody that means something to me and Ricky and that's kind of supported us through our lives. And Stuart's not a part of that. He's not my dad because he's not supported me, he's not taught me anything. And I think I've kind of realised that Tristram has done a lot more of that than I remembered him doing. Um, and also that Noel continues to do that now and continues to be there for me. And I've realised that both Noel and Tristram are what you'd call a dad, a proper dad. I think I was trying to discover who my dad was, but I've realised that I've already got two dads right here and I'm incredibly lucky to have that. And I was born in the fog of the day Could they hear a babe? Under all their faith or have they forgot what it was that they made?